I'm Aaron Graber with Ventrac, and today we're going to talk about the landscape rake. The landscape rake is an attachment in our lineup that is probably one of the most underrated attachments in my opinion. We actually recently did a job with this and we had a few other attachments on site and ended up the landscape rake being uh, one of the more useful attachments on that particular job. And so we were inspired to come talk about it today, just do a walk around, show all the features of it and bring some awareness to this highly effective, super useful attachment that a lot of people don't even think about. I have always said this to anybody who will listen, this is one of my favorite attachments. And so this is an exciting day for me to talk about <laughs> something that most people don't really think about at all. I love the landscape rake because it's kind of like a scalpel. It lets you do some of the really finesse, fine work um, that is a little bit difficult with some of the other attachments. And when you need it, it's really the only tool that's gonna do exactly that task. So let's look around and just kind of talk about what this thing is useful for. Basically, this is going to do debris management. So it's kind of a weird way to say it, but anything that's loose material. So think gravel driveways, think debris in a yard, cleanups, anything that's, that's loose debris that needs moved around and managed or removed from a site, this will do really well. Where this fits in on the job that we did recently, it was a, a typical yard installation where we started with a few different attachments, uh, did a lot of work with the power rake, and then ended up using this to skim off some of the material that was on top of the yard before we planted seed. Um, and what it's, what it's really helpful for in that way is that it moves material away better than something like the power rake. So the power rake does an incredible job of actually leveling and moving dirt and contouring terrain. But then at the end of, of the day, a lot of times if there's a lot of debris in that mess, that stuff will get brought to the top. And what do you do with it? Sometimes the, the small stones can be buried with a cultivator or um, if you're just you know, planting directly into it, they'll filter down into the grass eventually. But when you end up with larger you know, bits of wood or you know, trash, if there's anything in the dirt or anything like that, this is really the only way to get rid of that material without using hand labor. So oftentimes you'll see um, people prepping with a tiller or a power rake type attachment, and then they'll have to go back and do a lot of hand work because they've got piles of things. Uh, and they're either raking that into a bucket or off the side. The landscape rake lets you easily manage that material on a really wide area. So, you know, on that site, we were maybe two acres or something like that. I don't remember exactly what the, what the count was, but it's a really big portion. So if you have to do that by hand, it's just not gonna work for you. I've also successfully used this on my own driveway um, to spread gravel around and just kind of re-level. It's a little less invasive than a power rake. So if you have really compacted a situation with a lot of potholes, the power rake can go in there and rip that out and bring the material to the top. But if you're always maintaining it and you're just kind of doing maintenance mode, uh, there's still gravel that gets kind of pushed out to the turns as you drive around, things like that. And this does an incredible job of re-leveling and moving that loose material on the top in like a matter of minutes. So it takes what could be a, a, a multi-hour or a whole day job if you're using hand tools into like just a couple minutes of maintenance. So that's why I love it. That's why I use it. And that's why you would find a contractor or, or a Ventrac user putting it to, to work in a normal day. Let's go over some of the features now. So this thing comes standard as a 50 inch attachment, basically. And what you'll see here on this one is, it looks like we've got basically all of the options. So you'll see the outer wings here. These are 10 inch wings on both sides. So those slide into this tube here, this two inch tube. You can take these on and off by removing this pin and then it slides out. And you see that on both sides. So this takes it from a 50 inch attachment to a 70 inch attachment. There are not a lot of cases where you'd probably want to run the narrow version. We have it as an option that way so that you can if you need to get into tight areas. Uh, again, the width of the tractor is 48 inches. So in that narrow mode, in a standard mode, it's just barely wider than the tractor and it's really maneuverable. Um, every time I've used it, I want to use it on big areas. So I always have the wings on um, and that's an accessory kit that you can add to, to the unit. The other accessory that we've got on here is a hydraulic height adjust. You see that cylinder right here. Without this, you would have a standard turnbuckle, and that's perfectly fine. It gets the job done if you need it to, um, but this hydraulic height adjust really takes it to the next level because you can change the height of the tines real time from the SDLA lever on the operator seat, which means that you don't have to get off the tractor and make those adjustments. And every time I use this, I am always changing the height a lot because again, I'm not leveling with this. I've done my leveling with the power rake 
um, and I, I've done all of that, that construction that way. Um, so, so with this, I'm moving material. And that means sometimes I want to be deep into the material, sometimes I want to be just skimming, sometimes I want to be off the ground. So the, the tines actually have a, a pretty wide range of, of motion. You can go three inches below grade or three inches above grades for that six inch total movement. And to be able to do that with a hydraulic cylinder just makes it so much faster. We have the ability to do this in two separate ways as well. So if your tractor has dual hydraulics like this unit, you can get this accessory kit. Um, if your tractor only has a 12 volt, uh, then you can also do this with uh, the opposite kit that basically runs that cylinder, but off of a 12 volt switch so that you don't have to have the secondary hydraulic function. So just be aware, no matter which your, your tractor configuration is, you can add a separate accessory kit to do that hydraulic function. Um, the other thing to note here is that this unit has a couple different positions for these wheels. So you'll notice if you take these wheels out that uh, on this tube there's multiple positions drilled here. So you can get these wheels closer to the unit or further away and that's just a preference, operator preference, depending on what job you're doing and how, how tight you want this, these tines to track the ground. You can also move these wheels from the outer position like they're in now to the inner position. And there's a secondary position here that you can put them in to get them away from obstacles more. Uh, that would probably more likely be used if you're using the narrow version of the unit only. And then the other thing that you can do with this unit is actually take it and completely move it to the back of the tractor. We always run it in our videos and, and the projects that we do on the front of the tractor because everything's better on the front, it's easier to see, easier to use. But if you had another attachment on the front and you wanted to double up and make sure that you were uh, as efficient as possible, you could actually take this and put it on the back of the tractor. What you do there is uh, on the three-point hitch, you would get a Ventrac three-in-one accessory, and that basically gives you Ventrac hitch arms on the back as well. And then you would take this unit, slide it into the back, and then turn the tines around. So here you'll notice these bolts that bolt the frame to the actual hitch arm pieces. You would take these loose and then flip the whole assembly and then bolt it back in here on the front side. That way your tines are still trailing you uh, in the same direction. So they'd be pointed in the same direction that they are now. They'd just be on the back of the tractor. Then you can take this wheel and move it around to the other side and stick it in this side of the tube so that the wheels are again away from the tractor. And then you'd have the tines in the front, the wheels trailing, uh, basically the same net effect, but then the ability to, to have it behind the machine. The somewhat obvious, I guess, uh, explanation to what else you can do with this then is that you could take this and run this on another tractor in that configuration. So since you can run it behind the machine, um, you can, and on a three point with the, with the Ventrac three in one, all you would need is this attachment, the three in one adapter, and then you can put it on any category one three point hitch. And you could use this Ventrac attachment on any other whatever brand tractor. Um, you could theoretically leave it in this configuration so that on the rear, when you turn around, you would be just driving in reverse to use the scraping function. Uh, or, like I said before, you can take this thing loose, flip it around, and then put it down on the ground and, and drive forward with you. So pretty versatile in that regard, able to be used on other attachment or other tractors, um, and able to, to be used on the back of the Ventrac in conjunction with a second attachment, and uh, really gets some, some serious work done. So that's the landscape rake in a nutshell. It is a brilliantly simple piece of equipment. There's not a lot else to know about it. Um, the operator adjustments are pretty intuitive once you're on the seat of the machine. Uh, it's pretty obvious to be able to move the material uh, once you're there. I've used this thing for everything from moving bulk mulch to, uh, in that situation, you drop a big pile of mulch in, in an area uh, and just sort of dig in with this whole thing, take a giant bite and spread it around it's actually a lot faster than moving around with a loader or a bucket. Um, I've used it to skim grass off of a yard that's been dethatched uh, or reconditioned. We used it on our armyworm project where we basically tore up the entire yard. And in that project, that was crazy. So we had sod that was probably an inch or two uh, deep with just chunky dirt and everything else. So huge piles of sod with lots of grass. And we wanted to just push that off into the weeds and kind of level out a portion. And this thing was doing some incredible work there, um, basically moving twice or three times the amount of material that a bucket could because it was just pushing it all at once. And then with the height adjustment, I was able to feather that out. And as I'm spreading it out, just kind of slowly grade that out. So very useful for that as well. 
anytime you're moving anything bulk material, landscape rate comes in handy. Um, so every time I've used it, I just every every single time I get more and more amazed at how simple and how how well it works. <laughs> um, and we're here to spread the message. So check out the landscape rake. If you've never used one, make sure you get a demo and try it out on your own property. See what all it can do for you. If you have any questions on this attachment in particular, check out our website at ventrac.com. We'll be sure to make sure that the video uh, has a lot of active B-roll and a lot of other things from, from projects we've done so you can get some inspiration for what you can do with this. And we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.